Some people are not excited about the big post credit scene for the Marvels. Is it because you don't want to get excited for anything that has to do with the Marvels? Because this introduces two major characters into the MCU. I love this post credit scene, and let me tell you why. And I would love to hear why you might not be excited about it. All right, and maybe I can make you a little bit more excited. So here we go. First off, when I heard from my sources in advance that Kelsey Grammer was returning as Beast, I thought, as everyone else did when the story broke, that he'd be in full makeup like he was in X-Men The Last Stand. A friend of mine even said, if Kelsey Grammer is willing to get back in the makeup at 68, the least we can do is support him. Uh, but imagine my surprise when a fully CGI version of the character walked into the lab. Ah, he looks so good. Uh, which is a nice cushy gig for Grammer if he goes forward with this character. He does some voiceover work in the studio, and then he gets to go on the press tour. He gets to go to Comic-Con and meet all the fans and all the po I don't know if there are any fans left by that point for the MCU, but it could be really nice for him. He could use it. You know, Kelsey Grammer, uh, He's, you know, every, his, like the beginning of his downfall is when he had Camille Grammer go on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which I think was to have her have a job when he filed for divorce, so maybe he could get away with less, uh, you know, less of, a, less of a settlement. But anyway, she really did a number on him. Uh, you know, Camille Grammer is a tough customer. But, you know, he's got the new Frasier show. Uh, but, you know, you know, he's not giving up. And this would be uh, quite the feather in his cap. Uh, the CGI version, as I said, looks amazing. Oh, it looks so good. Right out of the Fox animated series from the 90s. The hair, the two little teeth. Oh, I think it's so great. Uh, I mean, maybe if you never saw the Fox animated series, it's not cool to you. Isn't that interesting? I mean, now I'm starting to worry about gargoyles. Uh, Cause like, that's the problem with nostalgia. It's a double-edged sword. You have to hope. I mean, like some people get really excited about it and that can warp the perception on social media because those people are very loud. But some people might simply not care. You know, like No Way Home worked, but the Spider-Man movies were huge. Uh, maybe the Fox animated series of X-Men wasn't as big as it seemed. Uh, and maybe not a lot of people actually did watch Gargoyles. Ah, that's really interesting. What do you think? Had you, were you, are you familiar with this version of Beast? Because if you are, this should like drive you nuts. You should be like, oh my God, that's just right off of the screen. Uh, so with this version of Beast, Professor Xavier's appearance in Multiverse of Madness and our sneak peek at Wolverine in his yellow costume in Deadpool 3, well, I think it's pretty clear that Kevin Feige watched the Fox animated uh, X-Men series, uh, and he supposedly even, and loved it, and he's supposedly even continuing that series as another animated Disney Plus show, uh, if it ever comes out. Uh, all the uh, Marvel Disney Plus animation besides What If, and even then, uh, is significantly delayed. I heard because it wasn't quite gelling. Like, where is this series? Uh, or any of them. But at this point, I fully expect Kevin Feige's, uh, well, some of the X-Men, we're going to talk about that. But I think when we first see the X-Men join the MCU, they're going to look like the Fox animated versions of the characters. Although, considering the, considering the lack of excitement about how Beast looks, Kevin Feige might want to rethink that. Uh, I don't think people, I don't think this is going to go the way he thinks it is. Now... Since he changed Kelsey Grammer's Beast from like the movie version to the as close as he could get to the animated version, maybe he's planning to have his fan fun with Fox's X-Men, right? And then after that, try to create a more, so he can have his cake and eat it too, and then have a more organic, down-to-earth, serious live-action version of the X-Men for his MCU team. Uh, you know, give him costumes. Well, also... Well, the Fox X-Men costumes just look like all the other MCU costumes, which at this point, like, they look so much alike. Even Moon Knights looked very similar in some ways to, like, the other, all the other MCU costumes. They, they all get them from the same tailor, and they should just make that canon, because we can tell. Uh, and the, but, but I think that maybe having the fun with the Fox X-Men might work, because I don't think that having these colorful costumes well, I don't know if it will translate to live action. I mean, Wolverine looks great, for sure. Far better than I ever thought that he would. But 
I'm still nervous about the other costumes because they're just so out there. Uh, and I liked the black leather of the Fox team. What did you think? I mean, it, it kind of became a running gag that they were sticking all superheroes in leather. And would you really fight crime in leather? I mean, you don't see professional athletes playing in leather. But it was a good look. I liked it. And I think more of a team uniform makes them seem more like a team. I like the, the Grant Morrison, Frank Quitely uh, redesign. I thought that was a pretty good idea. So I, I mean, it's maybe something in, in between. Like the all black of the movies, but put big yellow X's on them. And we're good to go. But I do think the Beast looks incredible. And I think that he transferred as well from animation to live action as Zeb from Rebels over in Star Wars. And I wonder if it was all part of the same test. And both cameos, by the way, were noticeably short. Like we're all still shocked that Zeb hasn't shown up in the Ahsoka show. Like everybody from Rebels is over there but Zeb. And they have a Zeb CGI model. So I'm guessing that they're still not quite at the level where they can appear for a long period of time. I mean, they do CGI animals quite effectively at this point, but I think maybe characters that have emotion and interact with other characters might still be a little bit difficult. I mean, even the Hulk is still a little wonky, right? Uh, you know, we saw how much they struggled with She-Hulk. Uh, so uh, what, what's the MCU plan with the X-Men? So here's what I know so far. Well, they're doing the multiverse, obviously, and that's gonna allow Kevin Feige to bring over the X-Men fully formed from another universe, just like he's doing at the Fantastic Four so that he can skip origin stories which he also did with Spider-Man, as you might recall. I mean, at this point, thanks to the Fox movies and the Sony movies with Spider-Man, everyone knows the origin stories of these characters. And so Kevin Feige just wants to hit the ground running. A number of Fox X-Men are going to sh show up in Deadpool 3. That's the no way home of the Marvel Fox movies. And again, now I'm very curious to see what they'll all be wearing. Uh, I think they're gonna be dressed like their animated counterparts. But maybe we might see them in a variety of looks. The X-Men get a lot of fashion changes in the comics. And I like that would be very cool, actually. It would allow us to make cool videos about it. Uh, but remember, Deadpool 3 is a multiverse movie. And so all I'll say is there's the potential for a lot of variants. Oh, many of the Fox X-Men then will, will then continue on to Secret Wars. And then Kevin Feige will transition to the MCU version of the team. And don't rule out one of the Fox X-Men may be sticking around. Uh, but that's like a really long time from now because you know, that's, that's after Secret Wars. And that is, you know, that doesn't even have, well, I think, what is it, like 2026? But, you know, you know that's probably going to get pushed. It's just taking forever. Uh, although since we're dealing with X-Men variants, the new MCU versions of some X-Men might show up and be introduced in Deadpool 3 and or Secret Wars. Uh, I've said before that Kevin Feige could even use it as a testing ground to see which versions of the characters fans like the most and then be like, okay, you get to stick around. So, and, you know, you might be like, well, why don't we just skip immediately to the MCU version of the X-Men? But why not have one last hurrah with Fox's X-Men? They sure deserve it. They really earned it. They were put through a lot of grief. And some of the movies were really good. X2 is still one of the best comic book movies ever made, in my opinion, and you can't talk me out of it. Also, X-Men Days of Future Past was also surprisingly good. The team is still, for the most part, remembered f uh, fondly by fans, and that's tough to do these days. Uh, and most of the actors are excited to get to play in the MCU. Excited and also just excited to be employed. Oh, I said it. Also, James Marsden and a couple of other one, uh, of, the, of the other actors really deserve the chance to redeem themselves. Because, you know, I would say Halle Berry, Anna Paquin. Uh, I, I haven't heard about Anna Paquin coming back yet, but I would like her to get, you know, she even got cut out of X-Men Days of Future Past where she looked amazing. So she's, she's really not uh, had a, a fair shake. Um, plus nostalgia is huge right now. I mean, again, look how well No Way Home did. And as we're seeing, since the Fox X-Men aren't sticking around, Kevin Feige can have a little more fun with them. All right, so the other big character, so share your thoughts down below about uh, as, uh, our transition to the X-Men. And we're just getting started. I hope Kevin Feige does this right. All right, so the other big character that's introduced is Binary. Do you not know who Binary is? Don't worry. Most people don't, which is maybe another reason that people didn't get super excited about this post credit scene. But if you were a comic book fan, you're like, oh, wow, that's binary. I'm also a Lashana Lynch fan, so I was super excited about that, too. And we'll talk about Lashana Lynch. I love Lashana Lynch. If you don't love Lashana Lynch, you haven't seen The Woman King. Because after you see The Woman King, it's impossible not to say she's one of the most awesome people ever. All right, so... 
Remember how Rogue sucked out Carol Danvers' powers in the comics? Even if you didn't read the comic, I'm sure you've heard of it because a lot of the people who don't like Brie Larson's Captain Marvel have been rooting for that to happen to her in the movies, which I don't think they should do because it's just, it's taken on a really violent, not cool aspect thanks to those, um, those more toxic individuals. Uh, but anyway, long story short, Carol went on to get new different powers. You can't keep her down in space. I mean, she was tortured by the brood and they kind of worked that in with the Kree torturing her instead in the movies. Uh, and so she became binary in the comics. So, and now those were her glowy powers. And Kevin Feige just took Carol Danvers' whole story and like boiled it down into one origin story. So she got the torture, she had the original Kree powers, she got the binary powers all in one fell swoop in the MCU. Uh, so maybe that's one of the, you know, that's interesting. Maybe that's one of the reasons that Carol, some people have said Carol Danvers hasn't earned her title as the most powerful Avenger. She's had no trials and tribulations. That's because Kevin Feige took them all away and just introduced her fully baked. And maybe that was the mistake. That's fascinating, actually. All right, so in the Marvel's post credit scene, we don't see a variant of Carol, but it's Maria Rambeau, just like we did in Multiverse of Madness where Maria had become a Captain Marvel. In fact, in the Marvels, there's a flashback where Maria and Carol talk about how it easily could have been Maria who went on that fateful mission that gave Carol her powers. Uh, we already talked about that as fans when Multiverse of Madness came out. So Maria and Carol are late to the party. But instead of the mess of competing Captain Marvels with fans having to decide, because we that's what we do, which we like better, giving this Maria variant the binary persona allows them to potentially coexist, at least in the upcoming Secret Wars. Oh, I would like that. I would like Maria Rambeau to stick around, just because I like Lashana Lynch so much. I still think her costume doesn't fit very well. We'll talk about it in a moment. Uh, did So did the rogue of this universe drain her Captain Marvel powers? I don't think the optics of a Southern white woman forcefully draining the powers from Maria Rambeau would be a good idea. So let's hope they don't do that. And that in this universe, Maria Rambeau found the quantum bands and then she became the superhero binary. That's right. While the binary's MCU costume does draw uh, from the comic book version, it's got a new accessory. As one of you pointed, I even missed this. One of you has an eagle eye and pointed this out to me, and that's that she's wearing both Kree quantum bands. Oh, and as we see in the Marvels, you can do a lot with both of them together. In fact, that's how Darben rips the hole in space and time that leads Monica to this alternate dimension that has the variant of her mother. Uh, which means maybe Binary can get Monica back to the main MCU universe and come along with her, right? But using the two quantum bands killed Darben quite spectacularly. However, it seems Maria's got the hang of it, unless she just put them on. <laughs> Monica's like, uh, do you have both quantum bands? And she's like, yeah, I just found these things. I'm thinking of using them. She could be like, don't do it. And she's, of course, de-aged, either like Carol, who we know doesn't age, or it's just a different time. It's a different universe, so maybe she's just younger here. This Maria variant has no idea who Monica, her daughter in the main MCU, even is. Uh, so this allows Lashana Lynch, they didn't age her up very much, I thought, in the Marvel's flashback sequences. I was like, when was this discussion? It seems like it was a very long time ago. Uh, but anyway, Lashana Lynch can come back to the MCU now, which I could not be more excited about. Ah. Lynch was an unknown when she appeared in Captain Marvel, but since then, I feel she made quite the impression in No Time to Die. I thought she was great in that movie. But then she was even better in The Woman King, where she was not only uh, did a fantastic job with her action sequences, but won, won over and then broke our hearts. Oh, so good. Wow. At the very least, I hope she gets to show MCU fans what she can really do, say, in Secret Wars. That's, I think, the best option for her to show up next. As they say, Third time's the charm. Kevin Feige must really like Lashana Lynch, too, as he just keeps trying to get her in here and have her stick. I think this is a good bet, though. Although, again, I think that costume doesn't fit quite right. Just like I don't think her <clears throat> Captain Marvel costume fit her right. What's going on over there, man? All right, so what did you think of Beast and Binary in the Marvel's post credit scene? When you first saw them and now that we've discussed them. Uh, and what do you think it means for the future of the MCU? Although Harry Styles' Star Fox is yet to come back, although Kevin Feige is saying it's still possible. What else is he going to say? No, Harry Styles doesn't want to come back. Didn't turn out very well. Uh, he's like, yeah, maybe. I mean, Kevin Feige, you got to get back to having a solid plan. That was your secret weapon. That's what distinguished you from the competition. 
you know, just throwing crap at the wall and seeing what sticks is what everybody else was doing. Why are you, why did you go to decide to join them? All right, so, but th this was good. This should have stuck. And the fact that it didn't stick makes me a little nervous. I think it might be the audiences just have no idea who, about the animated version of Beast and who Binary is. All right, and, uh, and they didn't see the Woman King, so they don't appreciate how amazing Lashana Lynch is. All right, so share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.